Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wastewater Operations Channel. I'm John Kircher and today I want to talk about polymer. Before I do, I want to remind you to like and subscribe down below to get notifications on when these videos come out. So what is polymer? Well, polymer is a long molecular chain made up of monomer subunits. We use polymer primarily to coagulate and flocculate our sludge. It assists in the liquid solid separation that we need to reduce volume in lots of our processes. We're primarily going to focus on cationic flocculant because it's what most plants use. Wastewater is generally anionic or negatively charged, so we're going to need a, a cationic or a positively charged polymer in order to flocculate or coagulate those particles. Variations in polymers include cationic, which is positive, anionic, which is negative, neutral, which has no charge, and amphoteric, which has both a positive and negative charge. Some of the other variations in polymer include the weight, the number of monomer subunits, the charge available or the density. There's also variations in the molecular structure, linear, cross-linked, and structured polymers being the three types. That's about as far as I want to drill down into the differences in those polymers. Just know that there's an infinite number of variations within all those combinations. Now the real usefulness of this polymer is increased efficiency in liquid solid separation through flocculation. And that's all about volume reduction. It doesn't matter if it's in a clarifier, in a dewatering press, in thickening equipment. What we're trying to do is get all the liquid and the solids separated apart to deal with only the solids. That's what volume reduction is all about. Now polymer's really expensive. It doesn't matter what brand you buy. It's a huge cost. Now it's worth it in most cases because of that volume reduction. When you're thickening your WAS, you don't want to send all that to the digester. The digester would have to be huge to accommodate those kinds of gallons. When you're hauling your sludge over the mountains like we are here in Washington, you need a reduced volume in order to not have to pay those trucking costs. So it's easy to quickly compare the cost of that polymer versus what it would cost you to maintain these larger facilities without that volume reduction. You can definitely go too far though. Uh, there's a diminishing return at a given point with almost every piece of equipment. And I found at our plant and other plants, a lot of operators just use too much polymer. It's sort of a safety factor and it makes us feel better because we don't have to watch things as closely. And it's easier to use a little too much than use not quite enough. So today we're going to go out in the plant and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for some basic evaluation. Hopefully you can end up reducing how much polymer you use in these processes. So to give you some context on what we're going to look at today, I want you to know that we use an emulsion polymer. We send that emulsion polymer through a Velodyne Veloblend unit. What a Velodyne is, is essentially a high energy and high speed mixer that unravels that polymer from its bulk storage state and makes it usable at the solution. Now this machine makes up directly to the equipment. There's no need for a day tank. And while that's still being debated in some level, there's plenty of testing out there and we're using it this way here. After the Velodyne's made up that polymer, it's on its way here through water pressure and being delivered to the sludge right before this mixing valve. Now the mixing valve is basically a check valve with a weighted arm and what it's doing is putting a lot of sheer force on that sludge and polymer to get a good mix. That's followed up by a flocculation tank. This flocculation tank has a very slow rolling action to get as many of those particles drawn together into as big a possible flock as you can get. After the sludge is flocculated in the tank, it flows out onto this stainless steel mesh stream. So we control the speed of the stream, but what we're after in this case is good free drainage. So what I want to make note of now is the cloudiness in the clean water. Now the flock size is really large, but that cloudiness is an indication that there's too much polymer. With this disc thickener, a flock that size doesn't really do any good. It does have to pass by some chicanes and it will get turned over. But I'll show you why. Once the flock gets that large, the structure is so complex that water can't free drain out of it. All we really need is a beaker. So 
So you can see how big the flocks are in that sample, as well as the cloudiness in the free water. So I'm gonna dump this sample, and we'll get a sample from the other end, and we'll run it on the O house. So already I can see a ton of free water in that sludge. So now that we're back in the lab, I want you to see just how much water is actually still in that sludge. Now this is free water and it can't really drain. So if we want to see how much of the water we could get out of this, we can just pour off all the excess and take a piece of it. Now this is that complex big flock structure I was talking about. And on a single pass screen through a chicane, it's really not gonna get agitated enough to drain all the water out. This would be fine in something like a screw press that uses some sort of compaction or pressure to help squeeze water out. But on the disc thickener, that's not happening. I can actually put just a mild amount of pressure on it and squeeze all that water out. So that's essentially unnecessary water that we're sending to the digester. So the first sample's done at 5.84%. It's not bad, but I think we can do better. So with that first sample run, let's turn this polymer down and see what we get. With that one change, I can already see the flock getting smaller and the free water getting clearer and clearer. So that's only a reduction of about one pound per ton. Let's go a little further. So we've come down about two pounds per ton on our polymer dose. Let's get a sample of the inlet and look at that flock. So I want you to notice how much cleaner the free water is and how much smaller the flocks are. It's the same story on the outlet. There's noticeably less free water in that sludge. Now the second sample came in at 7.84%. That's two percentage points better with less polymer. It's important to remember there was some free water in the jars when I took those samples. So I'm sure these numbers are slightly exaggerated, but the difference between the two is really meaningful. Just those two pounds in reduction of polymer can save the plant about $5,000 a year. Now that's not nothing, that's a huge deal. The difference in the dewaterability, even at only 2%, is about a thousand gallons a day. Now that's hundreds of thousands of gallons a year that aren't going into our digester. So hopefully this conveys just a little bit of how important these tiny, tiny differences are. So Huber's disc thickener is a great machine for this type of evaluation because you can see everything all the way through the process. Now I know what you're thinking, not everybody has a Huber disc thickener, but the principles apply to any dewatering or thickening equipment. You need an inlet sample and an outlet sample, and you need some beakers and basic cups. I don't imagine anyone has a Buckner funnel or even knows what one is. I didn't until I started reading to do this video. But you do have a couple of cups. A couple of cups can be used for a flop test. Basically, you'll pull inlet sludge from your press and flop it back and forth a few times, and that simulates the kind of gentle action that you'd get to form flocculation. You can grab the centrate and check that clarity. So these same principles apply across all these pieces of equipment. Now, there's some difference in the mechanical forces at work on the sludge. So you may want a large, big flock built on a machine that's gonna press that water out. But what you're after mostly is free drainage. Now everybody has one of these. It's just a simple screen colander from the home store. You can use this to check the free drainage of the sludge. You pour your beakered sample in and see how much water you get out of it. That's not a particularly difficult test. It relies mostly on observation and it's something anybody can do. You'll see that there's not a lot of water left in that sludge. 
Well, there you go, guys. I hope you come away feeling like you can investigate these things, get your hands dirty, and be inquisitive. And new operators out there especially, don't be afraid to get in there and look at things. That curiosity is what helps us figure things out. Don't worry about guessing wrong. I'm wrong 20 times before I'm right once. And that's 20 lessons you learn along the way. You never learn anything when you're right. Once again, if you liked the video, like and subscribe down below. It'll keep you up to date on future content.